Uh, so good to just have you back on this first Sunday as we just continue to worship the Lord in spirit and the truth. I've just been talking to so many people around and just knowing that God is definitely moving in this season in a wonderful way. So as you go through these strange, peculiar times, keep trusting the Lord, keep praying. Just want to give you some announcements as we're in this COVID time with mask and social distancing. I want you to be encouraged. We encourage you to wear your mask, to think about others as well as yourself as you're navigating through this world. But don't forget to share Jesus when God gives you those opportunities. As we've been dealing with that topic of preaching in the house, this is a wonderful time to share Christ, that people can be changed from the inside out. Also, don't forget about our all-member conference and video call that's coming up this Tuesday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m. And uh, we want you to just call in or video call, however, so that we can just talk to everybody in one space. Again, that's uh, this coming Tuesday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m. And I just want to give a shout out to all of our leaders, all of our ministries. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you're doing now. I've been hearing some wonderful things as we've been doing that each one, reach one. Uh, don't forget about our ebcnc.com, our website. All the links that we have there, our Bible studies that uh, we have continued on. We've got a, a new podcast that's there. Uh, check it out. It's on Spotify and iTunes. I'm just excited about uh, what the Lord is doing. I was telling our Bible study on Wednesday, uh, when you download that podcast, you can actually fast forward it and um, you can speed me up. So if I'm talking too slow for you, you can speed me up and it makes me sound really excited. Or if I'm going too fast, you can slow me down. I listen to a lot of podcasts and that's the way I, I listen to them a little quicker often so that I can uh, actually get through several podcasts in a lot of time. So try those little tidbits of, uh, of advice as you're listening to the podcast. Also want to thank you so much for your giving. Um, the Lord has blessed Ebenezer in a tremendous way. Uh, the scripture lets us know in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, So let each one gives as he purposes in his own heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And then at 2 Corinthians 9, 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance of, for every good work. And I, I wanted to read that directly to you because God is our provider and he's done so many wonderful things. I've been hearing even more testimonies about how God has provided. So we want to thank you so much for your giving, whether you're using ebcnc.com or the Tidely app or sending it into our secure mailbox. Thank you. Thank you. Also, for those who are reaching out, texting, connecting, and I've said that over and over again, but I'm excited. We are we're being known all around the world. I got someone that was in Texas that said she was excited how Ebenezer is reaching out and just loving on um, each one, each one reach one. If you're out there and you haven't received a call or a text from anyone, reach out to someone else. Reach out to me um, so I'll know that uh, what's going on in your life, that you can be encouraged because we are truly becoming a church without walls. And, and I'm excited about it because I'm seeing a revival taking, a, taking place within our individual souls, but also in the corporate body as God is adding to the body. What good news. God is just so wonderful. Well, God has given me a, a, another word. Uh, we've been going through that woman at the well, and today we're going to conclude that. But we're going to ask our youth choir to give us a selection and after they uh, give us that selection I'll be back uh, for with a word from the Lord. See you soon. I love Jesus. He's my savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, He's my shelter. Where He leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. 
He loves me. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He has been. blessed by that song from our youth choir. It's amazing as we uh, look at our blasts from the past and see different people, just how God is just taking care of us. And I'm, I'm just excited about his grace and mercy. Well, let's just go ahead and get in the message for the day. Uh, I want you to get your devices or follow along with us on the screen. Let's go to John chapter 4 and the 42nd verse. John chapter 4 and 42. We've been working through this, that woman at the well, and uh, the richness of God's Word as it ministers to our heart, especially in this season. Remember, we've also been dealing with that topic of preaching in the house. Um, God is really laid strong. He's put some other messages on my heart to encourage us in this time as we reach out and we share. And you'll hear this a lot, each one reach one, because that's what we're doing. God is bringing people into our circles now, and, and we're, we're, we're able to share Jesus Christ. We're having church in our home, in our area, as God is just moving in our hearts. Before I go any further, would you please go in a word of prayer with me? Father, I just thank you so much for this day that you've made. Lord, uh, help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I thank you for your word that was manifested for us and made flesh. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. I pray for uh, those that are listening and looking right now. Lord, if there's someone that does not know you, would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said that they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Now, Lord, as I approach this word yet again, 
thank you for technology um, being able to connect us via the internet and that your spirit is truly without walls that we are connected whether we're sitting in our living rooms or we're on our job or we're listening from our car thank you thank you thank you now holy spirit i welcome you in this place would you forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness holy spirit would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed and be like you. Would you be in my eyes and my saying, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Lord, thank you for your anointing. We need you, Father God. Transform us, please, from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at that John chapter 4 and that 42nd verse. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed Christ, the Savior of the world. Isn't that good? Listen to that. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ the Savior of the world. I want to speak from a, a title today, Do You Believe? Do You Believe? If you have some uh, people that are sitting in your living rooms or in your areas, would you just look at them? Uh, if you're uh, by yourself now and you're listening and you're looking in, won't you just repeat after me? It's a question. I want us to all search our hearts on this. Do you believe? Do you believe? As we get back into this section, just a little review from last time we were in John 4.35. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for the harvest. And our title from last Sunday was Harvest in the House. Just some points in review. Um, don't miss the moment from that message. We can't, this is, this is monumental moment. We don't want to miss that moment. Spiritual food, 2020 vision and still blind. God's will be done. And that's what we're praying. And we saw with the Samaritan woman and the disciples, God's will being done. Don't wait. The harvest is now. We're in this together. Isn't that good to know that we are together in this? It's a privilege to share Jesus. All of these coming together uh, puts us on track as we sum up uh, this section of day and just allow God to continually uh, speak to us in a, in a wonderful way. Time frame again is 80, 30. Much has happened. Jesus has uh, went to the Samaritan area, this well and, uh, at Sychar, and there he meets this, this lady. Uh, we find out she has a sinful lifestyle, and Jesus uh, opens that up. He reveals himself, and she runs back to the city, uh, knowing that she has met the Messiah and invites others to come and see him. The disciples had left Jesus. They went to get some food uh, while he was at the well. They come back. They see him with this woman. They're a little confused, and now all the Samaritans that have heard from this lady and the zeal, the change in her life, are coming to Jesus. Let's pick up John 4.39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him, Jesus, because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. Here's our first point of the day. I have a testimony. I have a testimony. Notice because of the zeal, the excitement of this, this woman, she goes back. And, and when you have been in contact with the Lord, something clicks on the inside of you. A change takes place. When you are excited about something, you're going to tell others about. When you're excited about someone, you're going to tell others about that person. And here, this lady has come in contact with the Christ the anointed one. Now, she's, she's got a testimony. Reverend Clay Evans directed a song written by Anthony Tidwell, said, as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. 
I've got a testimony. Sometimes I couldn't see my way through, but the Lord, he brought me out. Right now I'm free. I've got the victory. I've got a testimony. Anybody got a testimony? Do you believe? As we preach in the house, what is your testimony? As we've been dealing with this topic, have you been one of those that have been looking at other people's uh, testimony and, and your testimony hasn't been able to shine yet? What would you say if somebody asked you about your relationship with Christ right now? Uh, what would you say if they even took it back and said, uh, how is your relationship since we have been away from that physical uh, building, that brick and mortar, uh, what would you say? Would it be, well, I, I, I hadn't really gotten happy in three months. I, I hadn't really shouted in three months. I hadn't really clapped my hands in three months. I hadn't really sung songs in three months. I hadn't really been in prayer or seeking the Lord. Or, or maybe it would be, I, I, I really need a preacher or a choir to get me into God's presence. Or, or, or maybe there's someone out there say, Pastor, no, that, that's not my case. Or maybe someone would say, I'm glad you asked me that. Because during this time of being in the house, during this time of being away from that physical building, I've had to dig in deeper with the Lord. And my relationship at growing is growing more and more with me. And maybe you can say, that that's me, Pastor. And you can say, I, I know it because he walks with me and he talks with me. Would you continue on to say those that have had an encounter with the Lord? I, I talked to him today and, and can tell you that he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. Uh, he put food on my table. I'm talking about, do you believe? Uh, maybe somebody else would, would chime in and say, oh yes, I found out that he's a friend when I was friendless and I, I know him as a lawyer in a courtroom. Somebody might say, you know what? I, I found out that, you know what? He, he's a testimony on the inside because he's a healer when I had to go to the doctor. I didn't have anybody to really come in and lay hands, but I laid hands on my myself and I found out that he's a doctor in a sick room. Now I can see that we're all getting excited because when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, something should move on the inside of us. Something should be changed on the inside because we know how good God is. But do you believe? So often we've been encouraged, and that's a good thing, by other people's testimony. But notice, as the Samaritans get there, they are, are pushed there because of the testimony of the lady. And now they get to Christ, and they're hearing uh, the word that's coming out. They're hearing the life change verbiage that's coming out, John 440. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. Here's another point. Invite Jesus in. Invite Jesus in. As we're in this time, God has just really laid on my heart. This is a time about our roots growing deep. This is a time that we are really connecting with him to know him for ourselves. And notice as they get to Jesus, the Samaritans, and remember there was a rift between the Jews. The Samaritans were seen as nobodies, but Christ now accepts them in and now they urge him. We, we, we don't want to just stay here at the well with you. We, we, we want to be with you. We want to commune with you. And so they invite, they urge him to stay with them. And guess what? Jesus stayed with him. Re remember, this was just a pit stop. That's what the disciples thought at the Sychar well. This this was just the time to get some water. Jesus can get some water and the disciples to get uh, some food. But now it turned out to be a block party. It, it turned out to be an extended stay. And, and, and notice the Samaritans are excited about knowing who Jesus is. Could God have allowed the things to come in our society to really get our attention? 
Because so many times we can take for granted what, what we had. We can take for granted what we have. And sometimes God has to take away certain things so that we can realize how blessed we are. The Samaritans realize that they have a gem that's sitting right in front of them and they want to be in his presence. The question is, how much do we want Christ in our lives? Yes, yes, some of us had set up for having Christ uh, once a week on Sunday. Some of us had went in a little extended more to our Monday Bible studies or Tuesday or Wednesday. But I'm telling you, that is not enough. We need Christ 24 hours, seven days a week. We need him every hour. God wants to be within us, around us, all in everything that we're doing. The question is, do you believe? Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, this is a powerful principle. Please get this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 8, for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be open. But so many times we're not reaching out to God. Do you know God has so much more to give us? Yes, even in this season as we're in our homes and we have masks and we have social distance, God is saying, this is the time I want revival to start on the inside of you. The revival to start in the real church. I was talking to one of my pastor's friend today and he was concerned about as he's seeing the, the falling away of the flock and seeing some people not even focusing in. And, and he said, I believe that this is a time that God is actually separating the wheat from the tears. Yes, yes, God is using this time to, to really focus in and say, you know what, I've always had my remnant, but there were some other folks in there that were goats and they weren't sheep. You, you know I'm in the book. And so what God says right now, what I'm doing, I'm finding those people that are really mine. I know who they are, but I'm letting them know who they are. Isn't that good? Do you believe? Jesus goes on to say in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus said, please, I, I, I want to commune with you. I, I want more of you. I, I want you to have more of me. I want us to be together. But the question is, are we even knocking? Are we asking Christ to fellowship with us. Oh, the sweet communion when we spend time with the Lord. We are in his presence. Jesus even rebuked his disciples as he approached Calvary in Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? 26 and 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We must invite Jesus more in our lives than ever before. God is saying, I want you to pray and I want you to seek me. Yes, we're up against this flesh, but I'm telling you, when you break through into the spirit, God is going to be, begin to do something wonderful on the inside. We've got to pray to Jesus in our homes. We've got to worship. Jesus in our homes. We've got to praise Jesus in our homes. We've got to lift up our hands. We've got to clap our hands. We need to focus on him. We need to get in prayer. We need to seek his face more than ever. But do you believe? John 4 41. And many more believe because of his own word. I love that. I love it. Listen to that again. And many more believe because of Jesus own word. So we, we've got a group, they come out because of the testimony of the woman. That, that's wonderful because at least they got to Jesus. And now we've got a group, they're urging Jesus. We, we want you to stay and Jesus stays. But I love this part. There's a group that says, you know what? I, I heard the testimony uh, of the lady, but, but when I heard Jesus for myself, there ought to be some shouts in the house. I know there's some folks out there say, I heard it for myself, pastor. I heard it for myself. I've been in church all my life or I, I've been in church for a season or a period, but until I heard them for myself, oh, that sweet voice. I love to hear testimonies. I love to hear songs of other people. I love to hear how God has brought other folks out. But until you have a testimony, until you've heard his voice for yourself, here's another point. Get to Jesus for yourself. Yes, get to Jesus 
for yourself. I, I, I want to tell you a secret. I, I, uh, some pastors that, that are that are preaching, you know what? They haven't got to Jesus for themselves. No, no, no. They're just they're just putting the word out or putting a sermon out that maybe they memorize or they study real good, but they haven't heard them for themselves. So it doesn't uh, mean just because you have a position or you're a deacon or you're a leader in the church that you've actually got to Jesus for yourself. But when you get to Jesus for yourself, it goes past some entertainment source. It goes past just people looking at you. But now folks can realize, I'm talking to those that have a discerning in spirit. Man, there's something on the inside of that person. I know that it's bigger than other people that are around because now they are connected with Christ for themselves. Do you believe? Arthur Farstead, he writes, no two conversions are exactly alike. Some believe because of the testimony of the woman. Many more believe because of the words of the Lord Jesus himself. God uses various means in bringing sinners to himself. The great essential is that there should be faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe? Do you really have faith in Christ? Do you really have a communion with Christ? We're, we're going to take communion today. And, and that communion is all about thinking about what Christ has done for us, for his believers. But so often people have come in and they don't have a relationship with the Christ that they say that they're having communion with. Look at this final verse as we pull into together. John 4, 42. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Can I, can I read that again? Because I, I really want you to get this. Really want you to get this. Then they said to the woman, remember she had run back and told, gave her testimony about this man and had shown her everything that had happened in her life. He said, now we believe not because of what you said. We, we were excited about your testimony. Man, man, you set us on fire, but that, that didn't last us. That, that, that couldn't keep us. But when we went to the man for ourselves, when we went to Jesus for ourselves, he said, for we ourselves have heard him. Are there any amens in the house? I just wanna, I want, I want to get this across. We ourselves have heard him, have heard him, and and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Anointed One, the Savior of the world. Here's the final point: true believers, true believers, man. Those that are listening in right now, I, I'm telling you, those that are looking, I, I, I want you to look at yourself and ask, ask yourself, am I a true believer? Because if you're a true believer, as said before, you have heard his voice and, and, and you know who he is and you know his power, you know his anointing in your life, but you also know about just worshiping him and just being in his presence and know that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That now their faith has surpassed just hearing the woman's testimony. And we've got to get to the point that our faith surpasses just hearing other people's testimonies or Pastor Woods preaching or other preachers preaching. It's got to get past that. It's got to get past of the testimonies that we heard from mom and daddy. All of that is great. All of that is wonderful. But until you encounter him for yourself, until you come into his presence for yourself, are you a true believer? They have heard Jesus for themselves and they believe that he's the Christ. Christ broken down, it means the anointed one. Do you know that Jesus is Christ or is he just a word for you? Yeah, is he just a word that you use at the end of your prayers in Jesus' name? Is he just a word that you just throw up? But there's some of us who understand his name is powerful. Yes, yes, because when you've got a connection with the Christ, the anointed one, when you call on his name, you're not just saying J-E-S-U-S, -S, but you're connecting with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe. You know that when I call on his name, this is my elder brother. This is the one that's died for me. This is the one that's been delivered from the grave for me and now he intercedes for me on the right hand of the Father. Do you believe? John 
writes and describes what it means to know Christ for yourself. Please, please listen to this because some of you are saying, Pastor, what does it mean to be a true believer? What does it mean to truly believe? I, I love this First John 1.1. 1, 1. That which, John says, was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Do you believe? When, when you've come in contact with Christ, I'm telling you, you know you've been in his presence. You know you've been in, and, and John describes at this point, he said, we've seen him. Have, have you seen the Lord? I, I'm not talking about in that physical sense, that physical one, but you've seen him in the spiritual realm, which we have looked upon. And he said, our hands have handled it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. First John 1, 2, and 3, he goes on, he said, the life was manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Yes, we got it. The Father sent him to us and we connected with him. And now the life that's on the inside of him is on the inside of us. And that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, when, when we get him and, and we know him and we believe in him and we fellowship with him, now we got to declare it. Yes, yes, that's that's what God has done in my life. He's, he's become so, so profound in my life. I got to tell folks, I got to let you know how good he is and those that are believers, you feel the same thing. We got to declare him because he is so good. Good, but I don't want to forget 1 John 1 and 4. This is going to blow your mind. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. When you know who Jesus is, when you know him for yourself, when you believe him for yourself, when you're in his presence for yourself, you get joy. Are there any folks in the house today that are listening and you say, yeah, pastor, I got joy when I think about how good God has been to me. I get joy knowing the relationship that I have as we pull this all together. Aren't you glad that Jesus stopped at that well? Aren't you glad that he talked to that woman and he shared who he was? Do you get joy thinking about what Christ has done for you? That he stopped by your place and he stopped by to speak to you in spite of your sinful way. You know what? He carried our sins on our old rugged cross. He died for us, but I'm so glad to let you know I got joy today. He got up on the third day with all power and all glory. And yes, he's praying for us right now. Now, and now he beckons us as we preach and in the house to make sure we believe that we can share Christ to everyone that he puts in our pathways. Miss E.W. Chapman in 1865, she describes what a true relationship with Christ is all about. She said, closer to thee, my father, draw me. I long for thine embrace. Closer with thine arms, enfold me. I seek a resting place. Closer to thee, my savior, draw me. Nor let me leave thee more. Fain would I feel thy arms around me and count my wanderings over. Closer by thy sweet spirit, draw me till I'm like thee. Quick and refine and wash and cleanse me till I'm pure and free. But I love this chorus. It said, closer with the cords of love. Draw me to thyself above. Closer, draw me to thyself. The question is, do you believe? God wants us so close. And so often, we've wandered so far from him. But this is the time that we're preaching in the house and God is ministering to us. This is a time of consecration and separation. Yes, in these days and times, I encourage you, you should be in more prayer than ever before. Yeah, for those who truly believe. He should be reading his scriptures more, seeking his faith. Worship should become more real to you. Yes, your faith should be increasing in this time. If you find yourself waning, if you find yourself just not there, I want to encourage you to ask yourself, do you believe? Because Jesus has been speaking strong to me, and the Holy Spirit ministering to my heart, that this is the time that he wants you to know him. Yeah, striking out all the other stuff. 
He wants a true connection with you. That no matter what happens, whether another pandemic happens or some storm comes in, you know that you're saved. If you don't know him, would you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Scriptures say you will be saved. Would you accept that grace gift through faith, not of yourselves, knowing that that gift comes from God? Would you accept it? And then knowing that you accept it, now a change takes place. You want to be more like him. Yes, that doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes, you don't go through, but it does mean that, you know what, that still small voice keeps on speaking. That longing to be changed is still so deep inside. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for these scriptures that you've left for us. For the encounter with that woman at the well. But Lord, thank you for the encounter that you've made for us. And made with us. And you've made it personal. So I pray for those that have accepted you today, God. I, I ask for you to just lean in strong to them and hug them and embrace them. Draw them closer that they'll never forget today's presence. And that they'll continue to seek you more and more as the days come. Lord, for those who do believe truly and are true believers, I pray encouragement in their lives. I pray peace in their lives. I pray that this be a time of refreshing. Lord, that they're reading more, they're praying more, they're worshiping, they're praising you. Lord, thank you that all things are working to the good of those who love you and are called according to your plan and purpose. Thank you, Father, for making us true believers in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
today. Uh, I'm just excited again about what the Lord is doing in Ebenezer and with all our friends. And thank you for just uh, being with us today as we go into this communion time, a very sacred, holy time. And I believe personally, very special, even more so since we are doing uh, communion in our homes and with our family. So wherever you are now, just thank God for his grace. If you're there and you're saying, Pastor, I'm by myself. I want you to know that we're in this together. That was one of the points um, from uh, last Sunday's message. And through the Spirit, we're connecting with one with another. So as we go into this communion time, I want to lift up the scripture unto you that we can examine ourselves. Uh, if there is anything, anything that's going on in your household, people angry with each other, holding stuff, and they're getting ready to take communion, slow it down right now. I'm going to give you some time. We're just going to have a quiet moment where you can kind of search your house. And at this point, you can say, okay, am I ready to take communion? So let's just take a, a little brief moment of, of thinking about where we are in connection with the Lord. Ben, would you give us a scripture, please? Um, it says, it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, and it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For the reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, what we may not be, that we may not be condemned with the world. A powerful scripture as we think about ourselves and our relationship with others. Paul the Apostle, uh, led of the Lord, just allows the Spirit to flow through him. And I love that part. But let a man or woman examine him or herself. And so we're examining ourselves, we're thinking about Christ, 
and all his grace and mercy within our lives. I want you to go with us to the upper room as we're thinking about Jesus Christ at that last supper, as his disciples are there that Passover, and they're, they're just around laughing and just having fun, and, and they're eating. It's a, it's a celebration. And then Christ, he gets the bread, and he, he breaks it. Um, that time it would be one loaf, and he would break it, and, and he would share it amongst the disciples. I can imagine the disciples are just trying to figure out what's going on as he's breaking the bread, as he's pouring the juice. They're trying to figure out, okay, what kind of Passover is this? What does it entail? And at that moment, he gets their attention. Their focus is all on Jesus, thinking about who he is, his person, his love for them, his grace that he's shown, the miracle power, the relationships that he's besought with them. And then he explains what communion is all about. As he breaks that body, that bread that represents, he said, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. And as he lifts up that goblet and stares it with everyone, this is his blood. I'm going to ask someone to pray over the bread and someone to pray over the juice. Lord, we thank you for this day. Um, we ask that you would just bless this communion and help us to focus on you. Thank you for giving your life on the cross for us. In Jesus' name. Dear Father, please bless this juice that we're about to receive. Please help us to take it in remembrance of you, Jesus. And now we remember the Christ. as we have broken the bread from the same piece and now we partake of it that represents Christ's body. As often as you eat it, let us do it in remembrance of him. Let us eat together. As we pass the juice, we think about the color of it. Amazing to me that God has put everything in place. That the color of the juice, he said, this represents my blood that's going to be shed for you. Wow. As often as we think about Jesus and his sacrifice for us, let us drink together. connecting with us in the spirit as we've been able to take a communion together and until we meet again we just pray blessings over you and your family and don't forget you need to continue to preach in our house and we need to lift up the name of the lord wherever we go for god is so faithful i know you believe